Welcome to day 16 of online learning. We're going, yesterday we worked on equivalent fractions and those are fractions with different numerators and denominators, but they're equal and they make up the same amount of my whole. And we practiced using our fraction bars. And we used our fraction bars to compare these equivalent fractions, but we had to make sure that when we were comparing fractions with our fraction bars, we followed three rules. And those three rules are that they need to be the same size, they need to be stacked on top of each other, and they need to break up our fractional parts vertically up and down the same way so it's super easy for us to compare our two fractions. So we were using our fraction bars to see how different fractions with different numerators and denominators can still fill up my whole the same amount. They can still be the same or equal. So yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit different because some of you guys just might have gotten onto Google Classroom. So these three days are going to be used as review days to go over skills that we think are the most important for you guys to work on. So yesterday was equivalent fractions and today is going to be comparing fractions. Yesterday we were going over equivalent fractions to see different fractions with different numerators and denominators that equal the same part of my whole. Today we're going over comparing fractions. And so those could be fractions with the same numerator or the same denominator, or it could just be completely different numerator, numerators and denominators. But it's totally fine because we know that as long as we follow our fraction bar rules, it's going to be really easy for us to compare these two fractions using, using a fraction bar. So the first question I'm asking is to compare 4 sixths and 5 eighths using less than, greater than, or equal to. So what you need to do by yourself is following our fraction bar rules that our fraction bars need to be the same size, they need to be stacked on top of each other, and you need to break up your fractional parts vertically, so up and down, not across, the same way I want you to compare these two fractions. So I'm going to compare these two fractions, 4 6 and 5 8 using two fraction bars. I'm not just going to assume because my denominator is bigger in 5 8 that that means that that's a greater fraction. I'm going to check my work and use two fraction bars that are the same size. to show four sixths and five eighths. Notice how I lined them up and I also made sure they're stacked on top of each other and made sure they're the same size. Now I need to break up my parts going this way, not across that way. It's really easy for me to compare them. So for four sixths, I'm going to first break it up into three equal parts and then put two in each, because three times two is six, and then shade in four parts. And then for five eighths, we're just going to break it up in half, and then put two in each side, and then another two in each part, and shade in five parts. I'm going to draw my line right down from 4 6 and make it straight. And I'm able to do that because I made sure that they were stacked right on top of each other. That way when I make my line down, it shows how much of my hole is in each. So if I wanted to compare 4 6 and 5 8 using less than, greater than, or equal to, I see that 4 6 has more shaded in than 5 8 So if something has more shaded in of my whole, is it less than, greater than, or equal to? Pause me. If something has more shaded in, that means that it's greater than. So that means that 4 6 is greater than 5 8 Another way that I can write this is that 5 eighths has less 
than 4 6 so 5 eighths is less than 4 6 because my alligator's mouth is pointing to whichever fraction is greater one of the IXL skills that you're going to be working on today is comparing fractions so when you are doing this I'm going to show an example of a question that I might ask it says which sign makes the statement true one half blank one eighth so on a scrap piece of paper because I want to make sure that everything that you're doing right now on IXL is also done on a scrap piece of paper so you're checking your work just like we're going to be doing on our unit test so one half I'm making one fraction bar for one half and another fraction bar for one eighth that one's too big One half, I'm just going to break up my fraction bar in the middle and shade in one piece. For one eighth, I'm going to also break up it in the middle and since I already put one line in the middle up here, I'm going to do it exactly where that line is down here because my half for this should be the half, same half for this. And I'm putting two in each and making eight Parts. and I'm shading in one. So now I'm going to draw my line right down where one half is to see what sign makes this statement true. Pause me and think about what sign greater than, less than, or equal to would make one half blank, one eighth true. So I see that one half has more filled in of my fraction bar than one eighth. So if it has more filled in, that means that it's greater than. My alligator mouth or my greater than symbol is going to be facing towards my bigger fraction, which is one half. So now I have the question, compare five thirds and seven fourths using less than, greater than, or equal to. What I want us to remember about a fraction with a bigger numerator than denominator, that means that it's larger than my whole. So if I was to make a fraction bar to show 5 thirds, I'm going to separate it into how many parts my denominator is, so into 3, equal parts and then shade in five. But I have one, two, only three parts. So that means I'm going to have to make a, another fraction bar that's the same size. And again, separate it into three parts. So now I have one third, two thirds, three thirds, and shade in the rest to make up five thirds, four thirds, five thirds, because it took more than one whole to show this fraction. So this is also showing me one whole and two thirds. So another way to say five thirds would be one and two thirds, and that's when I have a mixed number. So now I have to do the same thing with 7 fourths. So I'm going to make one whole, and again I see that I have a bigger numerator than denominator. So I'm just going to make another fraction bar to see how many I need. Because I know that it's going to be bigger than one whole. So I'm going to break it up into four parts. My denominator says, and I'm going to do the same thing with both of them. And notice how I'm stacking my first hole in line with this hole, and then both of these second holes are lined up as well. I'm still lining up and stacking my fraction bars. So I'm gonna shade it in one fourth. So now I have four fourths, or one hole, and five fourths, six fourths, Seven fourths. So 
So I want you to pause and think about what next number can show seven fourths, just like we did one and two thirds for five thirds. What next number shows this? So I can also say one whole and one, two, three fourths. Just like I normally would, I'm going to compare my two fraction bars and line up the farthest or the all the way over here and draw a line straight down. So now it's telling me to compare five thirds and seven fourths. Pause me and think about how I'm going to compare these. So I see that seven fourths has more filled of my whole. So that means that seven fourths is greater than five thirds. By yourself, I want you to solve this problem. So it says compare six fourths and three halves using less than, greater than, or equal to. Just like we did before, I noticed that six is greater, my numerator is greater than my denominator in both fractions. So by yourself, figure out how I would solve these fractions and compare them using less than, greater than, or equal to. So you should have solved that by yourself. What I would do is make two fraction bars for six fourths. And I know to do that because my numerator is greater than my denominator, so that means that I have more than one whole. I have more than the parts I need for one whole. And then I'm going to do the same thing for three halves and make two fraction bars. And sometimes I'll need even more than two fraction bars. It all depends on how big my numerator is. So for six fourths, I'm going to break it up into four equal parts in both fraction bars by putting a line down the middle and then putting two in each. And then I'm going to shade in six fourths. So that's four fourths or one whole. So then I have five fourths and six fourths. Now I'm going to do the same thing with three halves by drawing a line down the middle, breaking up into two parts. I'm matching the same line that I drew up here because my halves should be the same. And then I'm going to shade in three parts. So now I have one hole. Now three halves. Now I'm going to draw my line right down the middle and show how I'm going to compare these two fractions. Pause me and think about what do you notice about these fraction bars. I notice that these fraction bars are the same amount shaded in both. So if they have the same amount shaded of my holes, that means that they're equivalent. So what I can write is that six fourths is equivalent to three halves because they have the same amount of my whole shaded in. During yesterday's video, we went over one and two. And the reason I chose number one and two is because it was talking about equivalent fractions. Today, since we're working on comparing fractions, I want us to go over number three. So number three says compare two thirds and two eighths. Which of the following statements are not true? Choose two correct answers. So pause me and think about what am I going to do first to compare two thirds and two eighths? I'm going to compare two thirds and two eighths by drawing two fraction bars that are the same exact size, that are stacked right on top of each other just like my rules tell me to. So two thirds and two eighths. Two thirds, I'm going to break it up into three equal parts and shade in two.
Then for two eighths, I'm going to break it up in half and then put two parts in each half to make four and then put two in each because two times four is eight and shade and two parts. So the question is compare two thirds and two eighths and figure out which of the following statements are not true. And then it tells us to choose two answers. So I need to figure out which ones are not true. So I'm going to make a line and compare my two fractions. And I see that two thirds has a lot more of my whole shaded in than two eighths. Pause me and think about if I have a lot more shaded in of two thirds, what can I say? Is it less than, greater than, or equal to, to two eighths? I would say that two thirds is greater than two eighths because that means that there, there's more shaded in here. But now I'm gonna focus on two eighths. Two eighths has a lot less shaded in than two thirds. So what can I say to compare two eighths to two thirds since there's less shaded in? I can also write that two eighths is less than two thirds. So now I'm going to come over here and check. So right here it says that two eighths is less than two thirds. And I say that that's true because there's less shaded in. So that one is correct. But I'm looking for ones that are not true. This one here says that two eighths is equal to two thirds. But here I'm looking at my fraction bars and I see that there's not the same amount of my whole shaded in. So that means that this one is not true, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to circle that two eighths is equal to two thirds because that isn't true. Here it says that two thirds is less than two eighths. So I'm gonna look over here and I see that two thirds has more shaded in. So would that mean that it's less? No, because if it has more shaded in, that means that two thirds is greater than two eighths. So that's another comparison that is not true, like I'm looking for. Now let's look at the last one. Two thirds is greater than two eighths. Right now I see that two thirds has a lot more of my hole filled in or of my fraction bar. So I know that two thirds is greater than two eighths. So this one is also true. So these are the two answers that are not true. They don't compare my fractions correctly. So your half due today is two specific IXL skills just like we do, did yesterday. When you're done, I want you to submit them. Just submit. It doesn't have to have any work included, but I'm going to see that you submitted your work and then I'm going to go check on IXL and make sure you spent the time on those only those two IXL skills for the day. I don't want to be seeing you work on any other skills, just be focusing on the skills that we went over today. So those IXL skills, I'm going to read your half due today, is to work on the, these two IXL skills with a scrap piece of paper to get a smart score of 80% for 30 minutes. You're going to work on the two IXL skills of comparing fractions and then also comparing fractions using models. And then when you're done, you can work on any other past unfinished math work. So those are the two IXL skills that you're working on. Please use a scrap piece of paper to be showing your work. If you want to submit your work afterwards, you could submit it as a picture, but you need to be working on those two IXL skills.